Hi there, Doug from Tau Stats. In a recent video, we walked through the emission distribution of the BitTensor network at a high level. We walked through all of the steps, but when you have a video like that, you can't get into the nitty gritty. You can't really describe every single aspect without the video getting extraordinarily long. So I promised as a part of that video to create some deep dives as part of that process. And today our deep dive is going to be looking at how emission is distributed amongst the 32 subnets of the BitTensor network. Let's get right into it. As you may know, every 12 seconds, a tau is emitted from the BitTensor network. And that tau is distributed amongst all of the active participants inside the BitTensor network. That's 7,200 tokens a day. The first step in that breakdown of that one tau every 12 seconds is to get split a, a between all 32 of the subnets. It's not an equal distribution. It's not like one thirty second to all of them. Each subnet is ranked on the quality of the content or the utility or the value of that subnet. And it's ranked today by the validators. The validators go through and give a rank to all of the different subnets. And that's how the emission is distributed amongst them. In that high level video, I gave you a pie chart and I said like, here's how it's broken down, right? Subnet eight gets 10%. And, and then there's some that get a lot less and then there's some that get more. Um, in this video, we're actually gonna work out how this pie chart is calculated. And so let's just go right into it and let's do that. On the homepage of Tau Stats, you can actually see the root subnet and the data inside the root subnet. And there are a couple things that are important here. Across the top here, you see all of the subnets listed. And that percentage underneath is the emission that each of the subnets get. So for example, subnet 10 gets 0.45% of the emissions. The rows are all validators. And you can see the validators all have different amounts of tau staked to them. The validators assign a value to each one of the subnets. Now, this is a really big table. There's lots of validators. There's 32 subnets. It doesn't even fit on my screen, right? So let's go with a simplified version to walk through how this is built. So I built a Google Sheet. And in my Google Sheet, I've got five validators and I have eight subnets. Makes it fit on the screen. Math's a little bit easier to figure out. The first thing to look at when you look at this is, again, the emission for each one of the subnets. These are really important values for a couple of different reasons. Number one, if you're a subnet owner, you get 18% of the emission that is delivered to your subnet. So you want this number to be as high as possible, right? Maximize the amount of tau that is earned by your subnet and to your team that owns the subnet. The other important thing to note is that the subnet with the lowest amount of emission in this graph, it's subnet three with 7%, they're at risk of being deregistered. When a new subnet wants to register, what happens is the subnet with the lowest amount of emission gets deregistered. So subnets are incentivized to get the highest amount of emission possible. Number one, it's more tau, but no, most importantly, they want to stay on the network. And if you have no emission, when a new subnet comes in or low emission, when a new subnet comes in, you're the one that's going to get deregistered. So the way this math works is if you're a validator and you're on the root subnet, you can assign weights to each one of the subnets. And so in this case, this is a uh, validator number one, and they gave percentages to each one of the subnets. And that has to add up to one or a hundred percent. So if you look at this, it's 8% for subnet one, 20% for subnet four, et cetera, et cetera. Each validator has to do that. And then the overall weight, uh, the overall score for a subnet is a weighted average. The percentage placed in by validator number one with 1 million stake is worth twice as much as any percentage placed in by validator two with 500,000 because they have twice as much tau delegated to their validator. It's a hundred times more valuable than number five with only 10,000 tau. So you can see here, uh, the amount of tau staked to your validator plays a big role in how much weight you have in setting these percentages. This is 
clearly not an ideal solution, but this is part of the process of moving to a more decentralized and uh, community-driven weighting of all of the subnets. If we look at this, we can see um, just how much one validator's weight plays into this. If we look at subnet one, validators two through five have given it over 10%, but the 1 million stake and the 8% has pushed subnet one down to 9.3%. Conversely, over here, um, all of the subnet, uh, the, all of the validators are under 12.5%, but the 20% from validator number one has pushed this up to 15.8%. So you can see how uh, the amount of stake really plays a big weight into this. But what if one of the validators on the root subnet decides to game the system? What if the validator with UID one has a vested interest in subnet eight and does something like this, where they throw a hundred percent of their uh, delegation to subnet eight, and then you'd get something which is completely askew uh, where subnet eight gets all of the emissions. This can't happen due to the Yuma consensus. The Yuma consensus is the magic behind the system and it ensures that all of the validators placing these weights in the root subnet are in general agreement with one another. So if one of the uh, one of these percentages is out of whack, the Yuma consensus like takes care of that and averages it back towards more of the, the median of, of the values, um, preventing one of the validators from gaming the system. And we've seen this happen where some of the validators give certain subnets a high amount and then they change it to a low amount. And it actually doesn't change the emissions to the different subnets because the Yuma consensus smooths that out. TauStats has a lot of information about the Metagraph and all of the real-time analytics and data that pertain to the BitTensor network. The root subnet's one of them. It's on the homepage. It looks something like this. If you really want to get to know about the analytics and how the BitTensor network actually functions and works, you can learn a lot from just digging into the data and understanding what's going on. And TauStats is really the best place to do that in the BitTensor network. You can visit us at TauStats.io. We've got a Discord channel, and we're starting to create videos like this to help you understand how the BitTensor network actually functions. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to our channel so you can get more videos like this one.